Yo, welcome back to the channel, guys. Before we get started, I just want to say we have a PO unboxing on August 18th. The link will be in the description. Send me shit. It doesn't matter. Well, don't send me literal shit. Don't do that. I will actually get mad. But send stuff. Can I send you a taco? You could send me a taco. Well, it might not make it. But yeah, send me a taco. Okay, let's get started. <laughs> So, hi everyone, this is Holly. Holly has done art with me before. I suck at art, but Holly really doesn't. I can show you an example real quick of how not shit at art Holly is. Holly painted this for my birthday. It's really fucking good. I cried so hard. Tonight, Holly is gonna be giving me, I think, the basics of painting. Yeah, we're gonna cover a bit of color theory and a little bit of a painting. Can an old dog learn new tricks? We're gonna find out. And no, I'm not gonna turn tricks. This is not Let's get started. We're gonna draw so many among you. Okay. <laughs> first, we definitely need to get you uh, oh, that brush pack. Yeah, the brush pack. Okay, first, I just want you to get comfortable with the brush. Also comfortable with color picking really fast. Fast? Because when painting, you are constantly color picking. So what I want you to do is something like this, where you're color picking the light spots, the dark spots, placing in different values everywhere, because this is painting. Okay. I have my finger on the, the Alt key. 100% of the time. You don't click I for eyedropper and then B for brush? You can do different things. Did you know you can, if you're zoomed in, you can hold the space bar and then pan around with your with your stylus? I learned that recently too. This is 90% of what painting is, at least digitally, is you live on the alt key. What kind of colors am I going for here? We're just slopping things around. Does not matter. I just want you to get comfortable clicking the alt key constantly. I think I'm drawing a spider, I'm not actually sure. In painting, there is a concept called lost and found edges. <laughs> the lost and found edges? I probably have some gloves in there from high school. Oh. Lost and found edges is when you have the shapes defined by sharp edges or soft edges. Sharp edges like this piece right here or lost edges like this side over here that is oh. fading into the background. This is also a really good brush to fill in large spaces really fast without bogging down your computer. I don't think I've ever had lag from a brush before. I like to work with a single brush when I'm painting. And the brushes I look out for are brushes that can be really hard with a very defined line, but can also be incredibly soft. I'm also, there is a concept called negative space, which we're probably going to be using a lot. Just paint a random blob. Okay, what kind of blob? Like a big blob? Just a blob right in the middle. My eye is going nuts? Uh-oh. This is so scuffed. I'm so sorry. <laughs> is I want to adequate? quickly teach about negative space. Since I don't have an undo button. Well, I do have an undo button, but I just don't think about it. I don't use it. When I'm painting on something, I'm always carving out the shape from the outside. Take your background color, which in your case is white. Okay. And just like carve shapes out of it. Carve If shape. I paint outside the lines, I will carve it away. I think I'm making a fish. I don't know. Okay, the coffee's starting to work. I'm getting the jitters. <laughs> You're getting pumped. I'm ready to teach. Getting jacked. I'm getting lost in the sauce. That sounds like it could be fun. <laughs> Your shape is looking a little sus. <laughs> no, it's not. Shut up. I'll make it a little <laughs> less sus. There, it's a little less sus now. I think that's even worse. Holy fuck, I'm just inherently absentmindedly drawing dick shapes. It's a submarine. There, it has a little porthole. And this is also another way to bring back those lost edges. Say you have a part that's kind of blurred. You can just pick something behind it and just carve the shape out of that. Naked of We're space. gonna paint something. We're actually gonna paint a flower. I have a picture of a flower that we're gonna paint. A flower? So we're just gonna mess with this for like another two more minutes. Okay. Dude, this is turning more and more like a wheat. I need to stop. I need to stop right now. All right, time's up. Next concept. Okay, thank God. <laughs> I'm ready for something new. Let me. Okay, we're gonna do a little bit of color theory. Okay. Pick a red. Pick a red. A blue. Okay. And a yellowish color. Oh, I'm gonna do crash course in color theory. Uh oh. Okay. There's a lot of different ways to do this. Okay. I actually kind of want to see what you would do on your own for this first. Take that blue, and I would like to see you pick darker and darker colors. Am I on the right track? I'm just. I'm running out of slider. All right, now do that with your red and your yellow. Oh, God. Because now we're going to start working with values and hue shifting. This sounds really complicated. Are you sure my dog brain can do this? Once you do it a few times, you'll understand it. 
I would say the colors that we are choosing are kind of bland. They work as like for light and shadow, but there's a way to make colors a little bit more interesting. And that is with something called hue shifting. For every new shade, we're gonna shift it further and further away from the base color. The blue is gonna go closer and closer to the red. The yellow is gonna become more and more orange. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do this again. I'm gonna make a blue and I'm gonna make it darker and shift it a little more to the purple every time. They look like fucking ice cream butt plugs. This is really subjective. You could just make it blue all the way down, but this is what I do. Everything I put on the paper, I am hue shifting in some way. This is fun. So as you get darker, one thing that can happen is you can make the colors less and less saturated. Do I have the same sliders as you, the little L, A, and B? There's one thing I have to explain to chat. I'm not using RGB color. I'm using LAB, which is lightness, tint, and temperature. Is that what LAB stands for? I thought it was lab, like a black lab or a chocolate lab. Those are nice. I love chocolate labs. They're so friendly. So, so with, with LAB, LAB the, the less saturated, saturated the colors, the A and B are gonna, gonna get closer, closer and closer to the middle line. Let's try, it might be easier with green. Blue is actually a tricky color to get right. <laughs> Fuck. So what I want you to do with the LAB sliders is turn down the lightness okay. and then turn down the B just slightly and do that over and over again. What we're doing here is we are making it less saturated and more blue. You are making the green more cool. And with lab color, there is a line down the center of these two, which means there is no color. So the further right you go here, the warmer, the further left you go, the cooler. And same with tint, it's just on a different axis. So if I had a green like this, the temperature would be just over here and the tint is over here. I made a little diagram showing what the sliders do. The little one makes it warmer, bottom changes the tint. And the top one changes how bright that color can get. So cooler. Also, this is how Ghibli makes their grass. They hue shift their greens into the blues when it comes to the shadows. That's why everything I draw kind of has that Ghibli vibe. So if I have this green and I want it to be warmer as it gets brighter, I'll just turn up the lightness and then add a little bit of the A in lab. But you're not adjusting all three at once when you're going for color change, Not right? all of the time. If I want a little extra spice, I will change both of them. As a general rule of thumb, you don't really have to. Right, because it doesn't work as nicely or as easily. It, it's, it's almost in the same way as like mixing two colors on the opposite side of the color wheel. You're going to get brown. Brown's a good color. Okay, I think I have a little bit of an understanding. Now we need to apply it to something. I have a picture of a flower. It's a very pretty flower and it also has a bee on it. You can see there's already hue shifting in this picture. Yeah, for sure. It is slowly moving towards the blue. The darker it gets, the temperature starts to change. And you can even look at the, the pistol here. It starts out yellow and you can see it get darker and darker and like into the oranges. I'm gonna teach you how to essentially sketch with a paintbrush. Uh oh. One of the biggest rules I follow is general to specific. Yes. I start with the larger shapes and slowly hone in on the smaller and more finer details. When I'm starting a painting, I literally just slap on the largest brush I can find. So right now my brush is almost at a thousand. So I'm just gonna pick an average color and start hue shifting, turning up the lightness, turning down the lightness, adding some tint, removing some tint. I am here just to throw paint on the canvas. I'm not here for accuracy at the moment. Okay, so I've run into the problem where everything's really blocky and bad. So what you can do, we can just start blending that out. We are just making a blurry underpainting, essentially. So we're still looking at the original picture as where we're blocking things or? Up to the top right here on the reference image, it gets a bit greener. I haven't added that yet. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna color pick something on the top part of the, the underpainting and add a little bit of green, which is the bottom slider, blue to green. Lab color is really hard to explain without any sort of visual. I'm ready. So when you're moving these sliders left and right, wherever this little arrow lands on, that's the color you're gonna hit. So if I move this over here, 
this is the green that's gonna show up when I start painting. Right. Or if I move this one over here, this color right here is the color that I'm gonna be painting with. So all the colors at your disposal are already here visually. You just have to move the slider. So if I want a bluish green, well, look at all that. that that's a bluish green. If I want a warm or like a, a, a yellowish green right here, that I can just move the slider to there. If you're not moving two sliders at once, I'm gonna move this slider over here. See how I changed the, uh, the tint more towards the yellow green yes now the a is now different the a has a much vibrant red right way more vibrant red than it was before so that's essentially how lab color works i usually move one slider and then micro adjust it with another slider if i end up really liking this color right here and then wanted it to be a little bit more warm i can just move the a slider okay i think okay let me get a color wheel so the green we have is right about here ish and if we want to make that green cool, we are essentially going to move it over like that. But if you want to make a large jump, say if you want to have a green go to the red, you are essentially going to pass through the center. You can travel around the long way, but the more you hue shift, the more unnatural it looks. Because like the colors have to look good together too, right? Like you have to make like a color cord for your eyes. Yeah, so say if, if I had this green and I was just like moving it over, it's like that's a long distance to travel to get to that red. This is like advanced color theory. And I'm like, I know what blue is sometimes. So what you have right now is fine. I would blend it out, take a really big, big brush, blend it out till you kind of have like an average canvas, an average lightness. Yeah, what you have there is perfect. That is a perfect underpainting. Oh God. So what I want you to do is look at this reference, squint your eyes. Okay. Do you see the, the really dark spots? Yes. Those dark spots are almost black, but not quite. There's no such thing as like pitch black in right. real life. So what you're gonna do is take that blue that you have, that bluish green, put the lightness down pretty far. Pigments ten tends to lose a lot of saturation. It gets a lot more grayer. So right. what I want you to do is the A and B, they're gonna get closer to the center, but not quite the center. Okay. It's not black and white. It always has a little bit of color. And we're gonna fill in those- The dark spots. Those splotches, those little dark areas. Now we're going to try to work on the highlights of the leaves. Well, there's two. There's there's two different types of greens here. There is. there is a light warm green and there's a light blue green. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start with the light blue green. I'm going to pick that blue again, bump up the brightness and turn up the uh, the tint just slightly. Turn down the B slightly more bluer and just splash it around where I think those colors are. Okay, and then I'm assuming we do the same for the, the green green rather than the blue green? Yes, for the green green, you would be moving the B slider to the right. Hold on, my dog just walked in. Oh, you come to hang out? Aw, oh, hold on. I can give you a doggo cam. Hi, buddy. You're so cute. What a dog. So now, let's see if we can put in the, uh, the, the big old flower. So I'm going to set my lightness. I'm going to actually use the lab colors to color I'm not going to color pick it off the reference. It is definitely bluer, so I'm going to move the tint over to the blue. And the temperature, kind of in the middle. Was that close? Oh, pretty close. So we're just going to start painting in that shape. You can probably squint and blur your eyes. The squinting strat. I love it. There's a lot of different colors in this, like, lavender. Yeah, what I'm doing here is just, like, the little embellishments in color. I am just moving the temperature slider back and forth. Just a little bit. Not a lot. Just a little bit. This is what it's like to paint on a single layer. If you make a mistake, you can just paint right over it. No mistakes. Only happy accidents. That is a Bob Ross. I'm not Bob. Bob Ross. But 
can you tell how uh, the midtones are now way more interesting now that you added a warmer version, a slightly cooler version? There's color variety in the midtones. Yeah, yeah, I see what you mean by that, for sure. And that's something that you can see in a lot of like museum pieces where people are mixing paint directly on the canvas. Also with painting, you kind of have to let go of being a perfectionist because painting is messy and it's kind of supposed to be messy. Yeah, that's the thing that I know I'm going to struggle with the most. By yeah, far. Like, if you look at my piece, there's a lot of the leaves that are just blurry, and that is okay. That is, that's adding character to the piece. Now, I would work on the shadows. I don't worry, I wouldn't worry about the yellow yet. We're just working with the, the lavenders. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. What I would okay. do, I would pick that purple, I would lower the lightness, I would move the tint, the B, down a little more to the blue. Okay. I would also move the A towards the center. Whoa. Let's see if that's accurate. That is not accurate. I would keep <laughs> the A. <laughs> we're, not, we're not gonna do that. Right where it is. My A is at 18 and my B is at negative 30. And you're gonna see the second you put in the highlights, that flower's gonna jump right out at you. Like a jump scare. Ah, flower's kinda scary. My purple here, there is a normal purple. One goes a little more blue, and one goes a little more into the red. Dude, it looks like I spread its legs. Oh no, step flower, you stuck. Yeah, like at the edges of the shadows, I add a bit more of temperature, move the A more to the right. Even though this is not what is on the reference, we're just trying to sell the general idea of what this flower is. I don't think I'm selling anything. No one's buying. This is one of those things where you have to really trust the process. I think your shadows are pretty good for now. We're gonna move to the highlights. Pick that original indigo you had, and we're gonna really bump that up high in lightness. And now we're gonna add more temperature. The A is gonna be pushed further and further into the red. And I might even push the B a little more into the yellow. And if it's not pink enough, add a bit more temperature. But for this one, I might not actually use the temperature. I might use the tint. I would probably push it, use the B and push it closer into the indigos and maybe push it into the yellows a little bit. I only concentrated on the bottom flower. Is that a euphemism for something? And there's one last level of shading we have to do, and that is the highlights. Got the shadows, midtones, the lights, and like got the really bright highlights. And throughout this entire process, I'm still constantly color picking and adjusting like the midtones, the shadows. Yeah, okay. I do kind of have a formula, just kind of also doing my own thing and just adjusting as I go. at a point where we could work on the little pistol. Maybe you're Whatever at that point. <laughs> I'm not there yet. Don't, don't leave without me. I would like you to pick that yellow on your own and see what you get. Can I make a new layer for this? No. <laughs> I think you have the right color. Okay. You have the right idea. Colors can be subjective when painting. If I chose that color, I, I would have been totally happy with it. My flower is the muskiest, apparently. That's kind of an so, innuendo. If I wanted to hue shift this, I would hue shift it into the red. So I would take the A slider, push it a little more to the red and just like add a little splotches everywhere. Just add a little more color variety. This isn't in the reference, but I would also take the tint slider and make it a little more blue and just add a little splotch or two on the top of it. Like the, the mid yellow that you have there, darken it down, I would probably say 60-ish. And what are you gonna do with the A and B slider? Make the B a little bit increased and the A decreased. It is a very intense color on the uh, ref. I would move the A slider a bit more to the right. Oh, you're going like, oh, oh, I'm gonna need to zoom in. And for the light, I think I already. You would it. go pretty far uh, with with the lightness, like 90%. Next time we do this, we're gonna paint a wolf. Yes, please. It's easier to learn color theory with really bright colors. A wolf, there's not a lot of bright colors. It gets a little more tricky. There's a lot more subtlety with that sort of thing. And when you feel like you're done with that, I would like to work on the light of the warm greens. Oh God. 
But try not to get lost in the smaller details. An issue that can happen is you would paint with a small brush and then you have one part of the painting that's really detailed and the rest is not. So that's like literally a metaphor for my life is I get too focused on the details that I miss the bigger picture. Oh God, please don't have that carry over so to this. It's just so the painting has the same quality all over. Let's actually work on the, uh, the warm greens real quick. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Which part of the flower is the ass? That's a great question. It's not where you suck the nectar. That's definitely the dick. So there's a few leaves here that are the warm green. So we're gonna take that. We're gonna brighten up, push up the lightness slider. And once again, I'm also hue shifting this. I would take the light and move the tint around, add some blues to it. For this, I'll make it slightly cooler. When you do that, it kind of gives it a shininess to it. It makes it look wet. I always think Ghibli grass looks wet for that same reason. Wet like your bones, correct? <laughs> oh, you mean like the bones in your, oh. Okay, what are we painting now? We did the flower in that one. Pick a color that's very similar to this color I'm about to pick. We're gonna paint a, a Ghibli background. Okay. Yeah, I, I don't think I have the brain capacity to draw a creature in the foreground. But hey, we made progress. In a tree. That wow, that actually going back to it just looks like a dick now. Fuck. <laughs> Thank you all this so much looks for like some wild abstract like MoMA piece of art. <laughs> It's honestly, it's like a fever dream. Holly, thank you so much for teaching me how to paint. I don't know if I got any better, but I feel like my brain's gonna explode. So we gotta be done for tonight. Thank you all for watching. That's uh, that's gonna be it. If you like the video, subscribe. If you like Holly, definitely go check out Holly. Her link will be in the description down below. That's gonna be it for me. Subscribe, like the video, leave a comment. I don't, I don't know, just that's the video's over. Bye, bye, bye. The video's over, bye now, bye. Thank you for watching, bye, bye, bye. I sent a friend a picture and my hand was in it. He's like, ha, you have little dainty lady subby bottom hands. I was like, what the <laughs> fuck is that supposed to be? And then later that day, he sent me a picture that had his hand in it and his hand looked the exact same as mine. And I was like, what the fuck kind of projection was that? Was he wrong? No, neither was I though.